Hey everyone, if your 3D printer has a cantilevered bed platform, just like the Hypercube, then your Z-axis rails provide the stability and the rigidity for the bed platform, constraining the bed to move in one axis only. As the bed platform protrudes out at least 200mm from the Z-axis rails, then any forces applied to the far end of the bed will act like a lever increasing the strain on the z-axis rails. So is 8mm round bar on the z-axis rails adequate for this purpose? Let's find out! If your bed is supported from both sides, then the diameter of the z-axis rails are less important. But I really like the cantilevered bed platforms as it allows unobstructed access from three sides of the frame. And it's simple to work with as you don't need to align the z-axis height on each side of the build platform. And as we're using steel as our z-axis rails, you'd think, oh, steel is very strong, but is 8mm of steel enough for this purpose? Well, if I try to wiggle the bed platform from the rear, so closer to the z-rails, there's, there's almost no deflection there from the Z-Rails. They're quite stiff. And as a 3D printed bed platform where the bed doesn't really move while the printhead is moving, that's going to be fine. But if I apply those same forces out to the front of the bed, you can see there's actually quite a lot of wiggle. And the Z-axis rails are flexing quite a bit. Just to show you the flex, here's the Z-axis rail. I'll wiggle it from the front. That is quite a lot of deflection. And at first I thought it was the, the Z-axis rail supports down here that were flexing, seeing as, well, they're only plastic, so they'll give way first. But if I just move that bit again, you'll see it's more the steel that is bowing rather than any movement from uh, the plastic clamp there. Now, the span of the Z-axis rails is 350 millimeters, so that's actually quite long, I guess, for a rail of, of 8 millimeters in diameter. So maybe it's time we beef up the diameter of the Z-axis rails. And just as a test, I've moved the bed right down to almost the very base. So while one side of the 8 millimeter steel is supported very close to where we're going to be applying the forces, the actual deflection is virtually gone. The, the bed is, I'm just wiggling it from the front, the bed is way stiffer when it's supported, so I'm wiggling that, the bed is way stiffer when the forces are near one of the clamping points. So it's definitely got something to do with the long span of the z-axis rail. Now I haven't had an issue with 3D printing with 8mm rails as with a light X gantry, especially using carbon fibre rails, there's very few oscillations or vibrations that happened around the frame. But if you had a heavier rail or if you're planning on doing something similar to what I'm doing and attaching a drill uh, to the X gantry, then you can imagine uh, if I've got for example, a piece of wood clamped up near the front of the bed, if the drill's trying to move along the x-axis, it could potentially start to drag the entire z-axis. So I guess uh, having a stiffer z-axis or increasing the strength of the rails would be a useful upgrade for the Hypercube. After witnessing the amount of flex we saw with 8mm steel rod at a length of 350mm, I've decided to increase the Z-Rail to a 12mm diameter. This rod is far heavier than the 8mm rail, in fact it's twice as heavy, and as you'll see in a moment, far stiffer than the 8mm rod in this length. To accommodate the uh, increased diameter, I had to redesign the Z-Shaft clamp, so instead of an 8mm uh, opening, we have a 12mm opening instead. For the uh, Z carriage. Instead of using two uh, standard length bearings, we're moving to a, a single longer bearing, similar to what we've done on the X and Y joiner. This eliminates uh, any misalignment between the individual bearings. So this particular bearing here is the LM12LUU. And lastly, we have the two uh, Z carriage clamps, which have also been redesigned to accommodate the larger diameter bearing. The price difference for the rails on Banggood 
we're looking at about double the cost, but we're starting at such a low base, so it's still quite cheap and economical to move to 12 millimeters. And the same with the bearings. As we're only using one long bearing instead of two shorter bearings, the price for the 12 millimeter version actually works out to be the same. Even though these parts have been redesigned to accept a 12 millimeter rail, the exact same fixings are used here. So on the Z shaft clamp, we're using an M3 by 20 millimeter screw and a M3 hex nut. Exactly the same fixings are used on the 12 millimeter version of the shaft clamp. And the same with the Z carriage and the Z carriage clamps. We have four M3 by 20 millimeter screws and four hex nuts. And we also have two M5 by 10 millimeter screws and the T nuts. And I just wanted to show for comparison's sake how much larger the 12 millimeter version of the long bearing is compared to the eight millimeter version. So this is what we're currently using in the XY joiners on the X gantry of the Hypercube. I was thinking about in, uh, incorporating these into the Z axis just to remove any misalignment between the two standard length eight millimeter bearings. But now that we're moving to 12 millimeter, I mean, that is a, a vast difference in size. You know, looking at the eight millimeter one, it almost looks too small for the application. And here's the finished result. The Z-axis rails upgraded with 12 millimeter diameter steel with the new 12 millimeter plastic parts. And I've got to say, this is way more rigid than using the eight millimeter steel. I mean, even just wop, trying to wobble the bed platform from the front, there's virtually no movement here at all. It's a major upgrade. So just looking at the front of the Hypercube now, we'll try to wobble uh, the front of the bed and there's virtually nothing there. I mean, I, I knew increasing the Z-axis rail diameter would, you know, stiffen up the bed platform, but I wasn't expecting it to go this well. There is one side effect of enhancing the Z-axis like this. To accommodate the 12 millimeter diameter rails on the Z-axis, we lose approximately five millimeters of Y-axis movement. And lastly, if you use an end stop attached to the Z-axis rail, you'll need to reprint the mount to accommodate for a 12 millimeter diameter rail. During the Hypercube build lock series, one of the design goals was to use as many components from your existing 3D printer to make a new 3D printer. And that included the rails. And by far the most common diameter size rail for our 3D printers is eight millimeters. But it's true, for a cantilevered design, even though an 8mm rail with a 350mm span uh, did serve me well, it was only until I've switched to a thicker diameter, in this case 12mm, and seen the, uh, the difference in rigidity of the build platform, that has actually convinced me to say, well, you know what, maybe we should be upgrading our Z rails to something much stiffer to totally eliminate any form of oscillations that may be present, especially on this side of the bed, during high acceleration moves, or if your gantry is quite heavy. So I'll be changing on the Hypercube page, the uh, parts to print for the Z-axis will be 12 millimeters, and also the parts to purchase, for example, from Banggood will also be upgraded to 12 millimeters. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments down below, and I'll catch you next time.